Monday matinees begin right here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. <laughs> Do you remember playing King of the Mountain with those three friends you had when you were a kid, Asylus? What? Those stooges you played with when you were little. What were their names? <laughs> anyway, you would play King of the Mountain with them. And then one day, other boys from the neighborhood came and tried to knock you off the top of a seesaw. I vaguely remember. <laughs> you knocked them all down, even the kids that were much bigger than you. And do you remember the girl that came along and finally knocked you off the top of the seesaw? <laughs> you turned bright red. Was it embarrassment, or were you just blushing? You really think she knocked me off? Perhaps I let her knock me off the top. Perhaps I was tired of playing the game. I'm not sure. The other kids laughed and thought it was quite amusing. <laughs> Must have been embarrassing. For them, maybe. Not for me. Not for you? <laughs> now I find that hard to believe. When I was tired of being king of the mountain, I would let somebody else win. You're king of the ultimate mountain now. All your old allies and challengers have fallen. Now that... King Hussein swims in the lake of fire. He says hello, by the way. He'll be anxiously waiting for you. You say this as if I should fear it. I do not fear it. I only fear God the Almighty. You do realize he was the one who allowed the lake of fire in the first place. I know this. I also know that in Ecclesiastes it says whatever God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken away from it. God has made it this way, so that men will fear him. The time for everyone who makes it to the summit of their mountain will one day fall from its peak, willingly or not, because it is ultimately God's will. New Kingdom Radio Theater. If you're a podcast junkie, you might be thinking about doing a show of your own. I can tell you this audio drama started out just as an idea while listening to other podcasts. And starting it was the best decision I ever made. But it can feel overwhelming if you don't know where to begin. That's why I got to tell you about Buzzsprout. Buzzsprout is by far the easiest and best way to launch a professional podcast. Buzzsprout will get you onto every major podcast platform like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and more. You also get an awesome podcast website. There is so much Buzzsprout has to offer. Start your own podcast with Buzzsprout and get a $20 Amazon gift card. Just follow the link in the show notes. This way Buzzsprout will know that I and all of us here at the New Kingdom Radio Theater sent you. And you'll be supporting our show, Buzzsprout, the easiest and best way to start a podcast. Lord Oreb asked Dr. Liverpool to leave his lab in California and relocate his research in New Eden at a base near the Grand Castle. Dr. Liverpool refused his offer and remained in Southern California. Not long after his phone call with Oreb, another massive earthquake struck at the heart of the city where Dr. Liverpool's lab was. The lab was completely destroyed and Dr. Liverpool barely escaped with his life. 
he managed to survive with only some minor cuts and bruises. But mostly, his pride was battered. He quickly relocated to his second lab at the university, which was mostly intact, and he could continue his research and monitor the Earth polar shifts. There, he discovered that the new North Pole was off by a few hundred miles than what he was estimated. This caused temperature spikes near the region of Antarctica, which led to the melting of large areas of ice. Upon realizing this, Dr. Liverpool called Oreb and told him the ice in Antarctica was melting significantly and he expected sea levels may rise dramatically. Oreb relayed this information to King Asylus. Asylus showed more interest in what was under the ice than the damage rising sea levels might pose. The curious king commanded Oreb to send a team of scientists, along with some Spartans, to Antarctica and report their findings. Just then, Lord Capone asked to speak with the king regarding some troubling reports of cannibals all throughout the kingdom. Sir, we've received reports of cannibals hunting people down, and, well, it grosses me out to even think it. But hordes of them, sir, in many places, even in the Middle Eastern regions. Also, my contacts in the Middle East swear that the reports of King Hussein's death are fake. They insist Hussein is still alive, and these are very credible sources. It may be that Hussein is in hiding. No, he's quite dead. This I am sure of. But how do you really know this? There was no body recovered. DNA, Quinton. His DNA was found in the rubble. He's dead. I don't know, sir. Someone could have planted his DNA there to make it seem that he's dead. I suppose he also removed his lower jaw, along with flesh from his face as well. He was identified using dental records, too. Oh, my God. That's grotesque. That wasn't reported on the news. No, it wasn't. The Middle Eastern Alliance, or whatever is left of it, wanted to keep that detail out of the news, out of respect. I can't say I blame them. I'm sorry, my brother. I know you two are close friends. This must be a sobering moment for you. In many ways it is. We all meet our fate sooner or later, Quentin. Well, I hope mine doesn't come at the hands of hungry cannibals. What should we do about this situation, sir? It seems like we're losing control of the kingdom. Please tell me you see this. I do, but even this is part of the ultimate plan. Ultimate plan? I don't understand. Talk to me, my brother. You can share anything in the world with me, you know that. I know. You are my truest friend. And believe me, in due time, you will play a much bigger role in what is happening. You will become an architect of a different sort. One that will reshape the entire world. Although I am unsure if it will be something you will be proud to do. What is it, sir? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, not so fast. Be patient. You'll find out soon enough, and so will everyone else. 
Well, just don't send me to round up cannibals. <laughs> up ahead. We're here. Now, I have to warn you, babe. My family from Kentucky is a little rough around the edges. Sometimes they can be brutal with their commentary, so I want to apologize for them ahead of time. Don't be so dramatic. I'm sure we'll get along just fine. Hi! We made it! Hey, you guys. Glad you made it. I hope your trip wasn't too scary. We've been hearing all kinds of stories on the radio these past few days, especially Yellowstone. God, who would have thought? Did you guys see it up close? You know, Aunt Charlotte... I think we got a little too close to the Yellowstone Danger Zone. I guess that's what they're calling it. It's pretty bad. You didn't inhale any of that volcanic smoke ash stuff they've been reporting, did you? We heard that volcano smoke rots your lungs fast. You sure you didn't get too close? No, I don't think so, Brad. Lisa! Babe, this is my little cousin Lisa. When she was teeny tiny, she taught me how to ride a horse. <laughs> She's one of the wittiest, smartest kids I ever knew. It's great to see you, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Nice to finally meet you. I've heard a lot of stories about all of y'all. But Cody especially has told me incredible stories about you when you were little. Yeah, Cody and I were inseparable for a bit. Aww. So y'all are really gonna get married in the middle of all this crazy stuff happening around the world? I can think of a million things I'd rather do right about now than shack up with someone. Like dig an underground fortress or something. Ain't nothing good happening up here no how. Yeah, I know it's crazy, but hey, a wedding is just what we all need. Get all our minds off this end of the world stuff. Have us a nice little party, and everyone forgets about earthquakes and eruptions for a while. That's my theory anyways. Yeah, I guess that's why we're all happy you decided to come here. We need something else to be thinking about. Anyway, I hope you kids are hungry because we killed our last pig for the occasion. Let's enjoy us some hot ham and all the fixings your hearts desire. I know I'm hungry, Ma. Brad, you're always hungry. Even when you're sleeping, you're hungry. No, uh Oh my gosh, I'm starving. I was walking home through the Wampus Woods on the haunted trail. Just released after doing a spell in the Gritterton County Jail. When I turned the bend in the trail, I got the worst fright of my life. Most horrid thing I've ever seen, a decomposing corpse of my wife. In her worm-eaten hand, she held a photograph. The children that I love so well. She drowned them in the bathtub 20 years ago. Plunged me into hell. She was hopped up on pills and alcohol, trying to steal the voices in her head. But the voice told her exactly what to do And then 
Charlotte, that was the best ham I've ever had in my life. Thank you so much for everything. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it, because there won't be any more once this is all gone. Cody, I don't know what we're going to do. We're running out of everything. We have enough for now. But we've been hearing stories about people's houses getting raided and robbed for their food supply. People getting shot all over a sandwich. It's awful. If we can get this wedding of yours done quick, that would be best. Because ain't no telling how long we'll last, to be honest. I'm so worried, I can't begin to tell you how worried I am. For everybody. Well, Brad's got guns in the house in case someone tries to come here and do something, right? Well, yes. We all have something close at all times for that reason. But it's getting more dangerous by the day. And Brad, well, he tries hard. He's got guts, but he ain't got no brains sometimes. Besides, he won't be able to fight a gang of crazies by himself. So guys, what was California like? I'm guessing not too much fun since you have quite the black eye there, Cody. Plus JJ is all scratched up in her face. Either you guys fought each other or something really bad went down in Cali. You gonna tell us or you gonna lie? We were attacked by a gang. You were attacked? What happened? Tell me you got some licks in on them bastards. Well, JJ and I got separated and I had to rescue her. So, I guess we fought off a whole gang of bikers. Oh God, is that why you drove up in a motorcycle? Well, yeah, I took it from one of the gangbangers. The knight in shining armor saves the damsel in distress. How romantic. It wasn't at all romantic. It was hell. What was that? What was what? Sounded like a loud bang outside. I think there's something outside. You got wild dogs out here? Brad, get your rifle and see what's outside. Who's out there? Cody, under the couch you're sitting on, there's another rifle. It's loaded. Lisa, get the pistol above the fridge. Oh, God! They're here! I'll guard the garage door. What? Who's here? The cannibals! Cody, cover the front of the house. Lisa, come with me to the back. Aim for the head. Shoot when you have them in sight. They're coming in through the windows. Don't shoot! It's me, Brad! I'm coming in through the front door, Cody! Oh! 
Check the bedrooms. Brad, make sure no one's coming in through the bedroom windows. I shot about four of them, but I couldn't see how many there were. JJ, are you okay? Stay behind me. Here, take this buck knife in case one of them gets too close. Leave us alone, or we'll kill every one of you bastards. Mom! Where's Lisa? She said she was guarding the garage door. I don't see her! Shh! Listen. I think they either left or we killed them all. I'll look outside again. I better go with him. No, wait, babe. No! Shoot. We better go see. God, no! What happened? Oh my God, oh, no! Baby, no! They got Lisa, no. babe. No! <laughs> my baby cousin. No! Cannibals killed young Lisa, Cody Valentine's little cousin. The young girl was decapitated and had portions of flesh bitten off in large chunks from her arms and legs. It was a gruesome sight. Whatever hopes Cody and JJ had of having their family from Kentucky joining them for their wedding, they quickly evaporated. After a few days, Cody agreed reluctantly with JJ to leave Kentucky and head to the East Coast, which was their original plan when they left California. They hopped on their motorcycle and headed to Peebles, Ohio, to meet up with more relatives before making their trek to DC. Meanwhile, Monica was being held against her will in an undisclosed location. Her talks with Malcolm were often combated and their relationship deteriorated with each passing day. All I want is to speak with my husband. Why can't I at least have a simple phone call to let him know I'm alive and being cared for? He's probably worried sick. You can't play both sides, baby girl. Stop calling me that. You're not my father. Well, you better pray to God I act like it, because your life depends on it. You made your choice to come with me, and now you have to go along with whatever I say. Just as if I really was your father. So are you admitting it? Can we stop the charade already? Just, who are you? For real? I don't think you really want to know. <laughs> oh, God. What have I done? <laughs> I've made a terrible mistake. <laughs> you made an impossible choice, Monica. But you had to make it. Otherwise, King of Silence would have had you killed as soon as your baby was born. At least with me, you have a chance to live. There is no way I could believe anything you say. I might as well be dead. The king trusts us, and he has no reason not to. We are completely devoted to the cause. Let Paul fool us, President Lang. He fooled us so well, I still find it hard to believe. Asylus has the power of persuasion. We were fooled because he used his mind to us. Oh, <laughs> 
When your answered your own curiosity, your own curiosity, I will not hang at the hands of that wretch. What? I know this is your work, Beals. I am in control of all my faculties. These ghosts are collections of memories you harnessed to spook me. But I will not be tricked by your black magic. <laughs> I find it very amusing. You think everything you are responsible for is somehow blamed on me. These ghosts haunt you because their deaths can be linked to you and your deranged quest. Nice try, devil. Everything I have done and everything that is happening is for the second coming, even the death of those who were once my friends. I will not be judged by the likes of you, but by the Almighty. The world is blackening with darkness and death, Osiris. I had no hand in it. You did. Exactly. For as it was written in Kings, the Lord said he would dwell in the dark cloud. I have surely built you an exalted house and a place for you to dwell in forever. You've been listening to The Rise of King Asylus, Episode 53, What Lies Beneath, starring J.B. Torres as King Asylus and Beals, Amanda Haggist as J.J., Austin Beach as Cody Valentine, John Dovey as Lord Quentin Capone, L.A. Bonet as Princess Monica, Gary Scales as Malcolm Banks, Maria Mikla Savage as Charlotte, Melissa Warmer as Lisa, Adam Higgins as Brad, and narrated by Sergei Brazhnikov. This episode features the song Southern Gothic by Viratica. For more information about the cast, the music, or this production, please visit us at www.theridesofkingasolace.com for a full list of our Season 4 episode page. And now a word from our podcast friends. Targeted True Crime Podcast. We tell stories of those who were targeted by abuse and investigate cases of family violence using academic research to interpret the events. I think we need to stop making family violence a secret. Let's use our stories to help heal and provoke change. Season four features the case of Marsha Brantley, a woman who disappeared in 2009, but was not reported missing until six months later. With new interviews, we'll explore the possibility that Marcia's husband had isolated her through coercive control from family and friends. Targeted True Crime Podcast. Peace, my friends. Peace. This has been a production of the New Kingdom Radio Theater in Baltimore, Maryland. Copyright 2021. I'm Keith Norris, and stay tuned for Episode 54. Hi there. Are you a fan of all things horror? Yeah? You are? Well, in that case, find Tuesday Terrors, which is the mutual audio feed that comes out on a Tuesday, believe it or not. Shock horror, I know. But if you subscribe there, you'll find amazing horror fiction audio in your player every Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday Terrors. Subscribe to the Mutual Audio Network. The Mutual Audio Network. Listening and imagining together.